Hello everyone, my name is May and welcome to the first video on my channel where I'm going to be playing Oxygen Not Included today. I have a little bit of experience in this game, about 200 hours worth, but I'm definitely not a professional by any means. So my own personal goal for this colony is to just make it to space. I usually only make it to around the point where you start expanding into the slime biomes, and then once it's time to get into the caustic biome, I usually just get overwhelmed. So all my 200 hours have really only been spent in early games. That's why I want to get as good at this game as possible and get as far as I can. So come along on this journey with me. Please don't be too harsh. I do suck at this game for now. First, I want to mention that I stream this on Twitch. So you can go ahead and check out my Twitch at twitch.tv slash utter underscore mayhem to watch the full VOD. Or you can check out my VOD channel at maybe mayhem VODs to check it out on YouTube. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and get on to the video. First things first, I am playing a classic survival playthrough on the Terra Planetoid. Let's go ahead and choose some dupes for our colony. I do use the DGSM mod just to ensure that I'm not sitting here re-rolling through dupes for an hour. I feel like that makes for a more fun watching experience, and I don't use it past the starting dupe choosing phase, so I don't think it changes the gameplay at all. I also use the build over plants mod, but it, once again, I don't find that it really alters the gameplay. Now I like to start off with a researcher, a digger builder, and either a tidier or a planter rancher. Let's start off with our researcher. I generally just shuffle the dupe a bunch of times until I get one that catches my eye. In this case, I liked Ruby, but I didn't love her researching and ranching combo that she started with because they're both really labor-intensive interests. So I switched ranching out for decorating. I felt like later in the game when we have a lot researched, we might be able to spare Ruby's labor for sprucing up our colony a bit. Next up is our digger builder. You can see here that I landed on a Lyra with plus 5 to construction, plus 3 to digging, and with mole hands. In this case, I was really happy with this. And finally, I just rolled my third dupe until I landed on someone that I felt like would suit our colony needs. In this case, that was a Turner with plus 3 to cuisine, plus 4 to agriculture, and the animal lover trait. Turner's going to be perfect for all our food production needs. So now that we have all our dupes, let's go ahead and load up our planetoid. We were really lucky to spawn right next to a big body of water here. We also spawned next to a point of interest building with a neural vaxillator, which I'm sure will come in handy later. The most important thing for us to do is to get started on bathrooms, so we made a beeline for the water to get a pitcher pump in for the sinks. You can see that I went ahead and got bathrooms set up on the right side of our base too. For our bathrooms, I just put in one outhouse and one sink for each dupe. While our dupes are busy building our bathrooms, I went ahead and adjusted all their priorities. Since Ruby's our researcher, I wanted to make sure they would prioritize researching, and when they didn't have anything more to do, they could decorate. Lyra is our digger builder, so of course I put digging and building on very high priority. And finally, Turner's our food guy, but I want him to prioritize cooking and farming, and then ranching, since we're probably going through relying on farming much more heavily in the early game than we will ranching. I also went ahead and turned off disinfect on all our outhouses, but that wasn't much of an issue anyway since we managed to trap a shine bug in our latrine, and shine bugs give off radiation that kills germs. So now that we have our latrine set up, let's set up our barracks. I really wanted to place the bedrooms in a spot where they'd be forced to walk through a nature reserve before they get to work at the start of the day, so I went ahead and placed the bedroom to the right of all these plants above our latrine. After I get the barracks set up, I usually like to go ahead and start working on oxygen production. So here you can see me working on batteries, a manual generator, and an oxygen diffuser. At this point, a viewer, Geek and Gale, suggested that we put our research station next to the printing pod for the well-lit bonus and later the laboratory. So I went ahead and did that too. We also discovered a saltwater geyser above our base, so that means we have a source of infinite water for later in the game. Since we've been expanding our base downward, we went ahead and started digging out our carbon pit, planning out our mess hall, and working on food. Since we have three dupes right now, we'll need a total of 15 mealwood plants to sustain ourselves. That's because each dupe can be sustained by five mealwood plants. At this point, we also discover a cool steam vent to the right of our base. I also set up a little carbon dioxide pit for our dupes to store their food in, right next to where we want our mess hall to be. For our first blueprint from the printing pod, we decided to get joya seeds as they are a great decor plant with a large livable temperature range. This makes them perfect for putting them into our great halls. 
I set up the basis for our great hall and then I started planning out our mealwood farm. I dug out 17 tiles in the farm so we could plant 15 mealwood plants with one free tile on each side. We also moved all our food to the ration box in the carbon dioxide pit and set up a supercomputer next to the printing pod to finalize our laboratory. Since our mealwood is where our original carbon dioxide pit was, I decided to push our water downward to make more room for carbon dioxide. And for our next printing pod, we just took brine since we don't have the food capacity to be taking a dupe yet. I know, we're moving pretty slowly. We also started working on researching decontamination to put a deodorizer next to the latrines so the polluted oxygen that the polluted dirt and water emits won't leak into our base. At this point, I decided to move our bathrooms to the lower level of our neural vaccinator point of interest to create better flow for dupes during their downtime. That way, dupes can go to the bathroom, wash their hands, grab their food, and eat all in one convenient row. And finally, at cycle 9, we get to put down our park sign and make our forced morale nature reserve. And since it is cycle 9, we decided to take an Amari to help with our dupe labor issue. Now since we have four dupes, we need to set up new schedules for our Amari. So I went ahead and staggered their sleeping and downtime schedules so that their bathroom usage wouldn't conflict with the other dupes. The second thing we need to do for our Amari is set up food for them. So that's what I went ahead and did by deconstructing the bathrooms we don't need anymore and putting down another 15 planters to future-proof our colony just the slightest bit. Cycle 12 brought us more salt water and we set up a rock crusher to finally start refining some metals. Now that we're kind of self-sufficient, I decided it was time to start exploring the nearby slime biome. Now, like I said in the beginning, this is usually about as far as I get. So we're approaching my normal ending point really quickly, and I'm starting to get a bit nervous. But the specific reason why we're trying to get into these slime biomes is to look for thimble reed and thimble reed seeds. With those, we can get started on exosuits that will help protect your dupes when they explore any other biome or when they go to space. At this point, we also find a carbon dioxide vent in the slime biome we're trying to dig out, which I think would be good for slicksters. I think slicksters are so cute, and I've never properly made a slickster ranch, but I'd love to successfully make one. So I'm going to make that a goal of mine for this playthrough. Cycle 15 brings us yet another blueprint from our printing pod, and I decided to get a pufflet. We don't have much of a polluted oxygen problem right now, so I just um, help it evolve into meat. That one kind of hurt because it's so cute. In the next few cycles, you'll see me slowly start to phase out our batteries to transition to smart batteries. I like to start our coal generation and smart batteries at the same time to preserve as much coal as possible. At cycle 18, we have a snazzy suit. I'm a sucker for a snazzy suit, so of course I had to get one. I also start to get some tiles into our latrine to get it ready for us to transition to regular toilets and sinks. You'll also see that since we couldn't find any thimble reeds in the slime biome to the bottom of our base, we decided to go explore the one on the top. And cycle 21 gets us another dupe. I decided that another digger builder would be great for our colony right now, since we seem to be slowing down on progress, which means we need more dupe labor. So welcome to the colony, Marie. I also went ahead and adjusted her priorities and schedule. Once we found some thimble reed seeds, I started setting up our bathroom setup so that we could feed our polluted water to our thimble reeds for later in the game. Cycle 24 brings us dupe number 6. Welcome to the team, Nicola. He's going to be our primary rancher, but we'll need to set up a lamp so he can sleep throughout the night since he's nyctophobic. After setting up our tiny thimble reed farm, I pumped our pipes full of water to kickstart them and finally started replacing our outhouses with toilets. No more stinky dirt and water for us. We started planning out our ranch and a little power plant, so now you'll get to see my jank power grid set up. I like to just connect one coal generator to each smart battery so that we can have two power grids instead of one. Cycle 27, I just chose to get another snazzy suit. I mean, how could I say no? By cycle 29, we finally get started on our infinite debris storage. This is pretty much the only kind of infinite storage I know how to do. I know there's infinite water and gas storage, but I just personally don't know how to set it up. Yet. But since now it's cycle 30, we get pip eggs. I'm not entirely sure what we're going to do with pips yet, but they are cute to have, so why not? Cycle 31 also means that we start setting up our first hatch ranch. 
I haven't seen a lot of hatches on this map though, so it's definitely going to be a slow start. But I definitely know I'll want to get stone hatches so that we can eventually feed them igneous rock. So I start filling up their ranch with whatever sedimentary rock that I have. I also decide to upgrade our ration box to two fridges to prepare for all the barbecue we're going to have in like 100 cycles or something. So now that we've got our ranch set up with one measly hatch, we decide to start digging up cracked tiles to look for any more hatches in our biome. But unfortunately, spoiler alert, we don't find anything. Looks like we're going to have to rely on eggs. Now that it's cycle 33, we have another blueprint. I'm not super impressed by any of the dupes, and I don't really have enough food to sustain another dupe, so I just grab some sandstone. Now that we've pretty much exhausted our resources here, we're going to have to start expanding. I put down some sinks towards the bottom of our base so that dupes can wash their hands before coming back into our base. Cycle 36 gets us bubbles. She's got doctoring, supplying, and cooking, which is great for us since we were needing a cook, and her extra carry capacity is just an extra benefit. She's also got a green thumb, but realistically, she's just going to be cooking all the time. It's also at this time that I realized I never finished building our Great Hall. I'm such a bad dupe manager. Right about now, I also decided that I wanted to break into the polluted oxygen packets and start deodorizing them. I mean, how much polluted oxygen could there be, right? Not that much, surely. Wrong. I was so wrong. I mean, look at all this polluted oxygen making its way into our base. I put down a bunch of deodorizers, and now we just wait. Cycle 39 means another blueprint, and I just take sand. I'm already stressed out from the polluted oxygen, and I don't want to have to worry about feeding and caring for another dupe right now. Since we've only got one hatch, I started putting down some incubators. We're going to set them up on an automation grid so that they're only active for just long enough to get lullabied by a rancher before they turn off again. Otherwise, they'd be a huge power sink. I'm just now realizing that our blueprints are coming in one cycle past the intervals of three now, so our cycle 43 blueprint is Gold Amalgam. This will be super helpful for us once we decide we're going to build a spawn or anything that will get just a little too hot for copper. We build our kitchen next in that area with our infinite storage and refrigerators. It felt like the perfect space to build one. Finally, with an electric grill, we can start making pickled meal lice which isn't any better in terms of quality, but it does last a super long time. Our next big project is the pea pit. Basically, we're just going to try to consolidate all the water in the slime biome and dig out all the resources we can. So let's get our dupes down there and digging out this biome so that we can make that pit. We're going to try to utilize gravity as much as we can to minimize power usage. I don't want to have to waste all that power on liquid pumps. But while I was digging out our pea pit, I realized we're running out of dirt. But that's going to have to be a problem for another day because this seems like a good place to end the video. As a recap, we've gotten through over 50 cycles so far. We've gone from latrines to bathrooms. We've got a little reed farm, even though it's not functional yet. And we're transitioning from meal ice to barbecue very slowly. I think we've made fantastic progress so far, even if it is a bit slow. But we've all got to move at our own pace, right? Every playthrough is a learning process, so if you're like me and you're not quite the best, but you love playing the game, just keep going at it. I promise each time you play, you're going to learn something valuable along the way. Thank you so much for tuning into my first video, and an extra thank you if you are watching me live on Twitch. If you want to check out my Twitch channel, that's twitch.tv slash utter underscore mayhem. And yes, I am going to be changing my name over to Maybe Mayhem sometime soon, but I'm not allowed to yet. If you want to check out the full unedited version of this video, check out my VOD channel at Maybe Mayhem VODs. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. It really means the world to me, and I appreciate each and every one of you. That's all for now. See you next time.